Can you drink alcohol if you are trying to get pregnant? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I'm a fertility doctor and I'll talk about fertility and your health and your hormones all the time. And I commonly get asked about alcohol. So today we're gonna break down one of these top questions and answer hopefully some facts for you. Bust some myths. Before we get started, just a huge thanks for all your support on the channel. Please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and asking your comments below. Anytime we talk about a controversial topic, I always get people in the comments who are going to say, yes, but this person, that person, or I had this experience. And these are what we call in of ones. It's really important to talk about this because there's no one thing that will cause infertility. There's no one thing that will cure it, but it's the sum of the choices that matter. And sometimes people get pregnant despite everything doing wrong. And sometimes people don't get pregnant despite doing everything right. But when we're starting to look at trying to have the highest odds of getting pregnant and the highest odds of having a healthy baby, we definitely know that it's much more than luck and there's factors within our control. So this is going to look at population-based data and talk scientific facts so you can understand everything you need to know. Recently, a clip went viral where somebody asked if it was safe to consume alcohol in pregnancy. I'm actually shocked that we're talking about this because I felt like we'd well and settled this. Large studies even published in JAMA have confirmed that there's no safe amount of alcohol in pregnancy to know that it won't cause fetal brain developmental issues, neurodevelopmental problems, or birth defects. This means that the safest course of action is that if you are pregnant, to not drink alcohol. So despite what you might hear or you might see on social media, remember that the scientific community is united in the fact that the safest thing you can do for your baby is not to drink. But what if you're trying to get pregnant or you're not yet pregnant, does drinking impact your fertility? Well, just because something is common and integrated into society does not mean that it's safe. Alcohol is very popular. I grew up in a family where it's part of every social or celebratory event. And I know that there are some people who can drink a ton and it might not impact their health at all. But on a population-based level, at the end of the day, alcohol is inflammatory. We know that it is metabolized into an inflammatory toxin, which directly can impact the permeability of your gut or your intestinal lining and directly cause chronic inflammation. If you've ever had a drink of alcohol and you've woken up the next day, you might know what this feels like to be inflamed. And of course it has to get metabolized through your liver and there's a variety of other things that happen. But if we're thinking quite simply, alcohol directly changes your gut and it causes inflammation. Well, we know that gut health and inflammation really have a huge influence on your ability to get pregnant because chronic inflammation can come back and talk and confuse the hypothalamus. Remember that in your ovulatory cycle, your brain, hypothalamus to pituitary to ovary, the brain has to interpret and send out hormone signals. So that is what the hypothalamus does. It's central command station, constantly interpreting signals from your body, deciding what's relevant, and then telling your pituitary gland if it's okay to send out FSH and LH, those hormones that are get you to ovulate. Well, one thing that we know is that if you drink alcohol, you have a higher chance of not ovulating. And this is because that chronic inflammation from the alcohol and the byproducts are actually going to work in the brain to inhibit the release of FSH and LH. So women who drink have a higher rate of anovulation or not ovulating than women who don't drink. And of course, if you wanna get pregnant, you need to ovulate. Then we see if you drink three times a week or more, because you'll hear people talk about moderate drinking and what is that level. Well, if we know if you have three drinks or more, it is going to take you longer to get pregnant. And based on population studies, you have a significantly lower rate of conceiving per month. So if you sit across from me and you ask, what do I need to do to get pregnant faster? And you're consuming alcohol. And I say, you need to drop that down or stop it. And you don't want to do that you are choosing to do something, you're making a choice, which is your choice to make, but you should understand the consequence of this choice is that the data supports it's going to take you longer to get pregnant. And then if either partner, male or female, so remember fertility is a team sport. If either partner is drinking at all in the month preceding IVF, Remember that with IVF, we can only work with the eggs and sperm that we have. So in IVF, we're gonna to try to get one month's group of eggs to grow forward. Of course, sperm reflects the past 90 days, but in both scenarios, likely you know the 30 to 60 days before we're doing the process is the most impactful when it comes to egg and sperm quality. And on its simplest level, the goal of an egg or sperm is to keep the DNA packaged in perfect form and 
then the egg has to have the mitochondria and the egg controls the competency or the early growth and development. So if either partner is drinking at all in the month preceding IVF, we see significantly lower live birth rates and IVF outcomes. So fewer embryos, lower pregnancy rates, but lower live birth rates. So let's just like let that soak in is that when you sit across from a doctor and you might ask, what can I do to improve my odds of getting pregnant with IVF? And they say nothing, IVF is going to handle it. Well, that is not a true statement based on the studies because we know there are things that you do that can impact your chance of success and drinking at all in the month prior to undergoing a cycle can actually lower your rate of getting to where you want to get. And it's just not worth it, especially when it comes to something that is as expensive and emotionally and physically time consuming as IVF is. So if you ask me if you can drink, I'll say at the end of the day, it's your choice. I give you data and you make decisions. But all of the studies that we have and the data that we have supports the fact that one, there's no safe amount of alcohol in pregnancy. So do not drink when you're pregnant. Number two, drinking alcohol causes inflammation inside your body. And if you've listened to any of my content, you know right now I'm talking about how inflammation hijacks your fertility. It is something that we need to try to limit at all costs. This inflammation is a universal fact when it comes to alcohol. It's also changing the integrity of your gut. So you're over here eating all these great fruits and vegetables to try to heal your gut and improve your hormonal health. Well, that wine you're having at night is directly changing it. In addition to the fact that we know this inflammatory cascade is worsened with alcohol, Alcohol itself is inflammatory, but then just think about, we know sleep levels are worse after you drink. Stress levels actually can go up. And we know stress and sleep are hugely intertwined into your overall inflammatory burden. So I think it's important that we understand not only do people tend to sleep less, they're more stressed, they make poor food choices, they don't work out. It's really not conducive to an anti-inflammatory lifestyle. And then we know that it's going to directly change the metabolic health of your cells on a cellular level. And that's important for IVF success. So we know that if you're trying to get pregnant, stopping drinking is going to be the most important thing. And if we look at those population based three drinks a week or more, we had lower rates of success. So the upper limit of what's okay we would say it would be two at most, but understanding that will influence IVF. And that's two drinks a week. And that's a standard drink, not an American drink. The good news is that if you stop drinking, you're going to decrease your inflammatory burden. You can heal your gut. It can take a few months, but your hormones can improve. If you're going through fertility treatment at all, if you are paying money to get pregnant, I would say don't drink any alcohol. The impact of alcohol is going to be really profound in your body probably even more so in the luteal phase, we're more sensitive to inflammatory changes. So don't drink if you have infertility or if you're going through fertility treatments or if you're pregnant. And if you're trying to conceive, know that this is one variable that you can control. And it is again, a team sport. Alcohol influences sperm counts and production. And even though it's not an on off switch, like some other things are, it is something that I want you to be in control over. Luckily, we live in a world where it's socially acceptable to not drink alcohol anymore. So I think that that is great news. When it comes to this, one of my favorites is going to be to get you know, sparkling water, like a Tobo Chico on ice, and you can add lemon or lime to it to your preference. It looks like a drink if you're in a social situation. People won't ask questions. Even if they do, I think it's very fine to say, I'm not drinking right now for my health. You don't even have to tell them that you're going through IVF or fertility treatments or pregnant. But making that shift now for your health is going to impact you long term. So this isn't something that's questionable to us. We actually have data to support that it is harmful to your fertility and harmful if you're trying to get pregnant. So please think about this when you're crafting what's important to you and prioritizing your health and your days. Please ask questions below so that I can help answer them. We're going to be pulling some YouTube from the questions. So can't wait to see what you have there. As always, you can get more information on my podcast as a woman or on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD and check out the book, The Fertility Formula. Thanks friends.